Hello guys, every good name is taken here and welcome to another video and today we want to review um, the SP1C but we're going to be doing it a tiny bit differently and how we're going to be doing this is um, the next update is soon to come in, which is to be precisely next um, or tomorrow for me for you um, it was already happened because Oh, um, someone gave me the idea to review this tank um, one part in this current update and then the next one or the other half in the um, next patch or somewhere later when this tank has been buffed it's going to receive a DPM buff um, for all I'm concerned and I've wanted to review this tank anyway as it's one of my favorites in tier 7 and so we will do that with two live games and server replay and stats and yeah that's what we're going to be doing so let's just start with um the loadout that i have and the stats we will talk about in um come on and um, when we're in the game so i play this with the um auto loading gun um with two shots um three seconds reload in between um, i guess we could um compare the guns right let's do that um really quickly um yeah so if we compare the guns the single shot has more dpm it has 15 percent more with the um, gun i'm using right now um and with vents was it i think it was vents um you have a dpm of 1800 as you can see on the um screen here as well um the single shot has 2100 so dpm wise it's the better choice on both guns you have an ap pen of 160 with heat you have 200 on both and with HE45 on both your damage being 225, 490 and 270 respectively you reload um, with nothing else on the, um, for the entire clip is 11.6 seconds the single shot has 6.34 so much quicker of course you have a two shells um, in your magazine with three shell, um, seconds in between so within um, three seconds of the first shot you do um, 450 damage um, you both have the exact same shell velocity um, of course as it's basically the same gun um, of 630 which is probably one of the lowest in that tier maybe even the lowest for all AP rounds and that's already insane so you gotta give a lot of lead and if you choose to use HE it's 338 nearly halving your or just lowering it by half so you gotta give a lot of lead if you snipe and hit you with this gun your aim time is 1.11 seconds um at 1.77 compared to the 1.99 that the sp1c with the single shot has the reason being um yeah this is ventilation so it improves everything a bit of course as if you use the single shot you have um a gun rammer here so that's not the case um let me actually just demonstrate you that um if we switch to the single shot then you have a gun did they change this i think they changed this because this should be a gun rammer right here okay that's interesting so um the stats aren't actually as far um in between um Blitzstar seems to be not up to date with that. Um, interesting information there actually. Let's quickly switch back to the ammo loadout I'm used to. And yeah, that's quite interesting actually. So there's not a lot of gun difference um, because both use vents instead of one using a gun rammer. Um, but yeah, um, you have better aim time um, or you used to because of the vents switch back is it the same that's ah, it's a bit better accuracy is um better on the single shot and yeah the dpm as we already talked about it and yeah that's basically it for the gun let's just hop into my loadout which is this um, speed boost and double hack it um just i don't know the speed boost if i really want to get out of somewhere or get a position early this is quite neat to have 
double food and fuel obviously and then just a normal ammo loadout here and yeah let's just hop straight into it and i'm gonna be comparing the sp1c to what i think is best comparable to the t71 as both are small tanks and have an outer load and so just let's hop straight into it so you got um as i said 1.8k dpm the t71 has better of 2180 both have 160 um APCR pen and 200 heat. Um, the alpha damage of the T71 though is 160 with um, a way quicker intraclip reload as well. You have 10.2, not just 11.6 like the SP1C has. You have three shells in your um, drum instead of the two of the SP1C. So your intraclip is 460 and instead of, where is it? Yeah, it's 480 instead of 450 but you need um 1.5 seconds longer to deliver that and the shell velocity is double that of the sp1c so gun handling wise it's not looking good for the sp1c so far um if we have a look at the aim time it's better on the sp1c surprisingly um as we said before we have a 1.7 seconds aim time nearly 1.8 and the t71 has just 5% less, so there's not all that much of a difference if we are nitpicking. Um, damn, it's hard to read stats and play the game. Um, your dispersion on the SP1C is 0 0.33 roundabout, and the one of the T71 is 0 0.3, so it's really gun handling um, mostly on the side of the T71 here. Um, which is probably why the SP1C is getting a small buff. And quite sure there. Um, speed wise the T71 has a better top speed um, it's 58 compared to 64. Reverse speed is pretty much exactly the same 22 and 23. The engine power of the SP1C is at atrocious 215 meaning that um, if you want to really get speedy this thing has um, to not weigh a lot and it does I can mention that later. Um, so your power to weight on this tank is a bit lower than the MT-71 but as it weighs a bit more than this tank um, it doesn't make too huge of a difference. Mm, what else could we talk about? Um, the camo rating is better on this tank than on the SP um, T-71 meaning that you can just be a better um, sneakier scout. Um, Traverse speed is um, better on the T71 by just a tiny amount, it's just 2% really, um, but there's not a lot of difference there. And the view range is better on the SP1C, it's 280 compared to 269, which is quite a bit different. Um, the T71 has 100 more base hit points, but as you um, will um, run extra hit points on both tanks it's not too much of a difference and I'm a bit in a struggle because I have to scroll down but we can't <laughs> but let me just finish this game really quickly and then we can also finish up the statistics as well and there we have it um, for the rest of the statistics of this tank um, you weigh 9.2 tons on this tank meaning if you get rammed you're screwed and the T71 has 16.5, so also don't get run by that thing, it's gonna do more to you. And one important thing I actually forgot to mention is the gun depression on this tank. Um, you got 10 degrees and 15 elevation, compared to the T71 7 degrees and 20 elevation. So overall this is quite the neat tank. We don't know the specifics of how much uh, this is gonna receive a buff, or at least I haven't seen it yet. And yeah, you have no armor 15, 10, 10 on the turret and 10, 10, 10 on the hull. So HE is gonna love this thing. Of course, you still have tracks uh, and a small gun mantlet, so you're not gonna get penned all the time. But be careful. Overall, this is a great tank. I love it. I also have the 5k rating camo on it. And yeah, one of my favorite tier 7s. And that's pretty much it for this part. And we'll see each other once the patch has happened. And then, yeah, see you all then. Bye bye. And welcome, everyone.
Or I shouldn't say welcome, but hello from me, um, I should say. As the first part of this video is a while um, ago, as you will notice, there is graphical difference between the first and second part of this. Um, that is because the update that was supposed to happen um, just happened about now. This is this current patch. The SPMC finally got us both, as well as some other tanks that were missed out in when I was thinking it would get its buff, because if you noticed or checked, you can also go back in the video, the result screen was the 16th of June, which is from the time of the recording this for exactly one um, two months ago. <laughs> and I now got my PC by then, the buff happened. And we're gonna finish up this review here. Um, the auto loading gun got buffed, I'm not sure what else, I didn't look into that. But yeah, um, if you remember, there was a hundred, um, about, let's say one shot difference and the a single shot was better in terms of DPM, but now the um, outer loading gun seems to be the better choice as it has more DPM. The M time is still a bit worse, but it doesn't really matter and the rest of the stats are pretty much the same. Um, but, uh, except for the soft stats, but I'm not going to pull them up now. Um, so yeah, it's just better now to play this, it didn't really get a nerf I believe, it even got quicker. Um, so that is pretty neat. And let's just play the second game of this review. And um, so you can have a comparison of how was it before, how was it after, did it even change at all? That's basically why I decided to make this. Because we didn't know how severe the buff would be that this tank will get, um, back when it was announced. So, yeah. It's definitely a great tank. I would highly recommend not looking over it, even though it is getting bullied by a lot of tanks, unfortunately. And it also only weighs like, what, 7 tons, I believe? So, try to not get rammed, avoid HE. Basically, do the normal stuff. Any light tank would do, or most of them. There's some out of the box lights, but they just don't fit into this whatsoever. So yeah, it's basically just a random rule of thumb, right? In a light tank, try to not get rammed. Try to not sit in front of derps. Nothing out of the ordinary. And yeah, basically what this tank performs well and how you can accelerate in it. They're just avoiding the dangers and using this really, really good gun. It has. For now, we need to speed our way out of there. Right. He just turned in, so that was not the gun's fault. Good job by that tiger there of turning in in time. Ouch. And that's basically what happens if you aren't careful enough with this tank, you're gonna get last up of HE. Just like I got now. Not even sure I'm gonna survive for all that much longer here. Because I can't really run. The blaze could just show up here. There's a turret in the middle. There's no one really that I can like quest cover from. Because there's no one there to even give me cow cover. But if of course the turn moves away then I can not move up, unfortunately. So second game not as good in terms of a showcase. But I guess it's still alright. I mean you can't always have good games and I'm not gonna just cut it out or do it because of this. I think sticking to what happened is good here. We saw the limitations of this tank, we still did good damage for T7, this is not that. Well how quick this game went and that the fact that we lost it, this was quite good and as you can see two months ago, if you check the better results of the other one. And I'm gonna upload this today hopefully as the time of recording this. So. Yeah it's a good, definitely a good tank. Your accuracy is pretty neat. You have you struggle a bit with shell velocity. 
Especially if you fire HE and HE. Though HE the most, it flies so slowly. Which is why actually you should probably go for this one right here. I don't know why I haven't done that. Um, to get that extra shell velocity, because that is really the only downside on this tank, I feel. So, I would highly recommend trying this tank out if you are a light tank player. Or just like Outer Lotus, because this is a really, really good tank. Overlooked by many, and definitely worth a pickup. That's why I'm keeping it as well, and why I have the ratings camo on it. And yeah. Also, let me know the difference in quality in the comments down below, like... To the old to the new one because this is basically the best comparison hand to hand because we're going from recording with 2.5 or 5k bitrate i'm not sure to now i'm on 25k with 60 fps and full hd so yeah hope you enjoyed this video and this review let me know in the comment section down below which tank to review next and i'll try to get back to doing weekly reviews i don't promise anything but I'll give my best and see you all again next time. Bye bye.